Whether by choice or circumstance, every career gets disrupted. Our world and our jobs are transforming well beyond Darwinian rates. We look at a screen when we wake, when we work, and then for fun return home to stare at another screen or two. And when we sleep, our phones have become our teddy bears. We're living like Bill Murray in our own digital Groundhog Day. And it's not just us individually. Whole companies and industries are disrupting overnight. The world's largest hotel chain, Airbnb, owns no hotels. The world's largest taxi company, Uber, owns no cars. The world's largest media company, Facebook, creates no content. And the world's largest retailer, Alibaba, has no inventory. We are living in an era of endless innovation, where century-old companies are being replaced virtually overnight by self-made billionaires in their 20s. Unfortunately, at the same time, student debt, credit card debt, and our national debt have us as a society working longer hours for more years for less disposable income. Let's pause and take a time out from our frenetic, multitasking, always-on, caffeine-fueled macchiato lives to focus internally for a moment. I want to ask you all a very basic existential question. Are you living life or just paying bills until you die? <laughs> Given how short our time on this planet actually is, it amazes me how little time we give to thinking about our own mortality. Today at work, you traded a day of your life, a day you will never get back no matter how wealthy you become, for your company. Was it worth it? And how did the salary you once dream of become a wage you can't live on? So you think, it's just a day. If you're lucky, you'll get about 29,000 of them. But what happens if you stay at a job that you don't like for a year, for five years, until you retire? You trade your entire life for the security of a good job. Fact is, there's no such thing as a secure job. Of the original Fortune 500 companies, only 57 remain on the list. So it isn't security that is robbing you of your ambitions. It is the illusion of security that robs ambitions. And at the end of your life, I can assure you, you will have more regrets for the chances you didn't take than the things you attempted and failed at. So what happened to your autonomy? How many of us are living the lives we dreamt of in high school or college? When did you stop dreaming? What excuse did you tell yourself? Who did you blame for the shortcomings of your life? The purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. You cannot live forever, but what you create and build in your lifetime can. Immortality is making a difference with the time we have. Are you making a difference? Is your job, your career fulfilling you? And if it's not, why are you trading the only life you have for something you don't want? And now here's the real paradox. If your job isn't fulfilling, why do we complain when we lose it? As I said, whether by choice or circumstance, every career gets disrupted. In fact, you really can't lose your job. A job isn't like a wallet or a set of car keys. You can't lose it accidentally. Consciously or unconsciously, you choose to lose it. You make yourself dispensable, disposable, like a razor or a diaper. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can change. You are as limitless as the universe. It's time to disrupt you. Time to take off the self-imposed blinders, remove the years of shackles reinforced by parents, teachers, and others who told you what you couldn't do. 
Don't let people who gave up on their dreams stop you from pursuing yours. Here are the three lies you must stop telling yourself in order that are keeping you enslaved in a life you don't want. Number one, I'm not smart enough to be successful. From a young age, I was told I was less than. I didn't speak until four. I struggled to learn how to read. And in first grade, when the teacher divided the class into three reading groups, the eagles, the hawks, and the mud hens. <laughs> Even then, I know I didn't want to be a mud hen. Turns out, I'm dyslexic. My brain is wired different than the norm. Labeling kids as different sets them down a path of believing that they are less than others. In life, you only get what you believe you deserve. And I was being taught that I was unworthy of success. I was so embarrassed by my inability to read that whenever a group project was assigned, I instantly volunteered to lead it so I could delegate what I couldn't do and mask my inadequacies from my peers. Turns out, that's great training for an entrepreneur. At, <laughs> at seven years old, I'd stumbled upon the winning formula. Master the process, not the task. Steve Jobs, Thomas Edison, Ted Turner, Sir Richard Branson, we're all dyslexic. Turns out dyslexics aren't less than, we just think different. According to a recent CAS Business School study, 35% of U.S. business owners are dyslexic. Every one of us, dyslexic or not, are all different and therefore have something different to offer the world. It is our differences that make us unique and therefore successful. So as Dr. Seuss wisely wrote, you have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. Number two. The second lie we tell ourselves is, I will fail. Fear of failure is the most fiendish thief on earth. It robs you of your success and the world of your creations. Fear is accepting that the odds are against you. It's the same as accepting defeat before you begin. Fear is the reason why most people are unwilling to risk what they have for the opportunity to have something better. Fear creates a paralysis. It coerces you into sacrificing your goals and autonomy. To disrupt your mind, you must recognize the difference between failing and failure. Failing is trying something that you learn doesn't work. Failure is throwing in the towel and giving up. Two guys I worked with years ago had what they thought was a genius idea. Synchronize traffic lights to a computer to reduce urban congestion. They named their company Trafo Data. Unfortunately, they were ahead of their time, and local government planners just didn't get it. So Bill Gates and Paul Allen's first company failed. Their second company, Microsoft, did a little bit better. It grossed $16,000 its first year in business. Some of the biggest brand names have failed. Henry Ford, Walt Disney, Henry Hines, all went bankrupt before creating their billion-dollar empires. As Edison wisely remarked about creating the light bulb, the very symbol of creative genius, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. When I set out to put the first video on a computer or launch the first line online auction, I didn't know if we'd be successful. Every startup I've worked on had moments when it looked like the end was near. Success is never guaranteed. But you'll never know how close you are to success if you give up. I learned to stop focusing on how far I have to go and started to appreciate how far I'd already come. I believe in the power of effectuation or positive thinking. Scores of scientific studies have, on effectuation have proven that visualizing success makes all things possible. Quite simply, a negative mind will never find success. Think about it. Have you ever heard a positive idea come from a person in a negative state? Of course not. Those people shut down mentally and emotionally. 
They're consuming today's energy, focusing on yesterday's mistake. A positive state of mind releases dopamine to the brain. It lights up the neurotransmitters like lights on a Christmas tree. Research data proves that positive thinking expands creativity, increases energy, raises intelligence, and even closes more sales. Success doesn't make you happy. Being happy creates success. To really disrupt your mind and get the most out of each and every day, you must begin with the following two affirmations. Today can be better than yesterday, and I have the power to make it so. Remember, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Number three, the last insidious lie we must stop telling ourselves is, I don't have the resources to be successful. If only I had the money or the contacts, I'd be successful. Let's look at each of these factors one at a time. Money. First, I didn't have the funding is the grown-up version of the dog ate my homework. Too many entrepreneurs are better at manufacturing excuses than products. The simple truth is more than 70% of the world's richest billionaires are self-made, and they have the same 24 hours in a day that you and I do. Thanks to mobile connectivity, broadband, and social media, it now takes 95% less capital to launch a startup than it did just a decade ago. And not only is all the network architecture in place, but venture capital firms have doubled the amount they're investing in startups to over $40 billion. Remember, VCs exist solely to give billions of dollars to those with the insight and drive to succeed. Add on top of this the billions available through crowdfunding, and access to capital has never been easier or more democratic. Crowdfunding is the most zen-like of funding sources, accessible to everyone, yet controlled by no one. There are no gatekeepers blocking your access to success. The money is available. All you have to do is learn how to ask for it. Of course, I didn't understand any of this when I launched my first company, naively, with just a dollar. See, I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. I had bought into society's implicit social contract, get good grades, go to a good university, and live happily ever after. Problem was, when I graduated from UCLA, bam, I was thrown into a jobless recession. No one was hiring young graduates, especially liberal arts majors with no marketable skills. <laughs> the few job openings listed were for people with years of experience. My dream was to work in Hollywood, on special effects like George Lucas created for Star Wars. But I had no skills, no connections, and no experience. What I did have were student loans and two young sons to support. Fear can either immobilize you or push you to challenge your perceived limits. So with the fear of letting my children down as my only motivation, I became an entrepreneur. With one dollar, I printed 100 business cards for my non-existent computer graphics company. I knew no one would hire me, but if I worked at a company, mind you, I didn't even make myself boss of this company, perhaps I could convince Hollywood Studios to hire us to do their post-production effects work. Turns out, with a little hustling, they did hire us. And with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business in hand, and not a clue as how to do any of the work I committed to, I then went on the task of recruiting the best people I could find. Just as I had done in elementary school, I delegated to the people with the actual talent and experience to do the work. I discovered the first rule of self-disruption. The only two things you need to succeed in life are insight and drive. Everything else can be hired. Once you prove to people there is no lack of capital, the second most common excuse is, I don't have the connections. Really? I didn't start off my career knowing the president or the pope, but I figured out how to get to know them. Today, we live in an interconnected world. Each of us holds in our pocket a device that connects us to six billion people. With billions of consumers just one click away, you only have to be right for a nanosecond to become a billionaire 
or change the world. Think about it. YouTube, Instagram, Oculus Rift, all sold for billions without ever making one penny in profit. Why? Because of the size of the market potential that technology allows us to reach with our ideas. Ask yourself, where do virtual reality experts or Internet of Things experts or Bitcoin experts come from? They started just like I did with my $1 worth of business cards. They're all self-proclaimed experts who then work hard to grow and defend the turf they so wisely staked out. Get out of your comfort zone and expand your universe. Success grows from solving problems for others, and our world has plenty of problems. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Find your unique voice, and the world will listen. Our world is disrupting at an ever-increasing pace. 3D printing will eliminate 320 million manufacturing jobs, and self-driving vehicles will displace tens of millions more. Office automation will cull the ranks of middle management in half. Your career will be disrupted. But you are not a set of car keys or a disposable razor. You have a choice. Disruption isn't about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. I have one final question for you to consider. Would you rather work 40 hours a week at a job you hate, or 80 hours a week doing work you love? The real challenge for each of us to regain our autonomy is to determine where we feel we can make the most impact, to pursue our purpose. To change who you are, you must first change who you think you are. It's time to disrupt you. <laughs>